Hi everyone, Shirtlad here. Given that the last year's release of Gundam Evolution brought an influx of people to the IP to say the least, I thought I'd run a bunch of games that share a couple of mobile suits with Gundam Evolution's roster. My picks were chosen based on movesets, the gameplay and personal preference. For example, I will feature the counterparts of NRX44 Ashmar and the RX782 Gundam from Gundam Assault Survive because the former has grenades and the latter comes with the super napalm. But at the same time I did make sure to give it some variety. The order should be more or less the same as it appears in the official Gundam Evolution site. With that out of the way, let's commence. So, we're kicking off our list right from the very bottom, at least when it comes to the site. We have the RX ADPR Pale Rider. This is quite an interesting unit. But uh, when it comes to comparisons between this variant, which is from the Gundam side stories, and the variant in the Gundam Evolution game, this one is a much, much more uh, hit and run oriented unit. It has missile pods on its legs, it has a machine gun, and it has very, well, let's say, very deadly melee combos, to say the least. It's definitely something that you would pick as a substitute for the Gundam Pixie, honestly. And uh, yeah, aside from the machine gun and the missile pods and uh, well, rather under average health pool, it also has decent mobility. And uh, as you can see, I've stacked up the AP gauge, which now it's right under the shield HP, which is under the regular health, as I was saying, regular health bar. Oh, sorry for the start there. And as you can see, it dispatched the dome rather promptly. And the machine gun isn't anything to scoff at here. And right next to the, right next to the missile pod barrage. It also has a beam spot gun. The beam spot gun is a very nice thing, which I will also demonstrate rather quickly. And uh, it is a deadly weapon. That's and that's for sure. And it also deals with the stuns in a rather well, rather formidable fashion. By which I mean it kind of shrugs them off. It's like yeah, it's moved them back a little. So that it acknowledges that it did, but when it comes to the greater scale of things, it didn't face in a little bit. I mean, didn't face a little bit. And right now, I'm destroying the DOPS. Now, this uh, unit is very good at destroying the aircraft thanks to the fact that it has a machine gun. And the machine guns in this game, well, the machine guns in this game are very good against the aircraft for, for a very simple reason. And that is that it has a lot of expendable projectiles so that if you miss one it uh, doesn't force you to wait until the whole thing reloads. As with the GM Aqua which I've demonstrated well, which I've demonstrated in one of the early videos. Now the purpose of my attempt to call the aerial population in the sky, which currently consists of dubs. A rather, well, right now an end endangered species is that uh, you need two AP stacks to perform this game's equivalent of the G maneuver, as in the various systems, i.e., you know, you have the exam system and of course you have the Hades system, which I've popped right now. It makes you faster, it lasts 45 seconds. And uh, you also get a little bonus to your usual attacks, and probably toughness as well, I mean, I shrugged that thing off, at least health-wise, as if it was nothing, so I guess it isn't all bad when it comes to durability, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, as you can see, like, the moment I fire up my thrusters, I'm really fast, and now, now I'm gonna throw a little barrage on the... On the dub day, because this is a target-based stage, 
right now you can see the rockets flying off and uh, even after the system has deactivated I can still put up quite the fight anyways as I was saying on to the next one which if I am not mistaken is the RX-8 to Gundam so yeah for the granddaddy I picked the iteration from Gundam Assault Survive as I said because it's one of the games that does the old RX-7-8 to Gundam Justice. It's, it's a neat one because it has Super Napalm, it has the Beam Rifle, the Hyper Bazooka, the G parts and uh, you can also get your hands on the Headless one and the Magnetic Coating one. Anyways, you're probably here to see the Beam Rifle and the Gundam as well. It also has a serviceable shield. When it comes to the Super Napalm, it is a very strong incendiary explosive, which you will see in a moment. And uh, this explosive is uh, basically proximity based, which is good for when you want to set up traps. At the same time, you can manually shoot it it is affected by gravity and it also has a 30 second uh, let me find, yeah there's a 30 second fuse which means that if you want to set up uh, certain time based traps that's another good way to go about it another cool thing is that uh, essentially you get the head vulcans as your secondary weapon which basically allows you to let me spread a, a noise, which basically allows you to detonate that uh, that super napalm without switching weapons. It's not as flashy with the whole throw things, such as the version from Gundam Evolution or you know Gundam Extreme Versus even, but it's good enough for what it is. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best way to sum it up. When it, at least when it comes to uh, the weapons themselves. The, this unit is very fast, very mobile. And let's see the next one. Well, I was a little split when it came to the Zaku 2. A ranged loadout. As listed in the Gundam Evolution website. Because, you know... I wanted to probably go with the Zionic front one because that one has the that one has the gas green well the smoke grenades right and uh, yeah, but I ended up with the Gundam vs Zeta Gundam one because it can dash a little more and it's much much better as the flanking unit because in this one the machine guns are basically more optimized for that as opposed to like some uh, full on pushing forward as you can see the other one in uh, this match is the GM and I'm doing quite a number on it with the Heat Hawk. The Zaku in this game of course has the cracker grenades as a sub weapon which are in my opinion, uh, they do require some training to get uh, completely right because you know they're very useful as smooth punishing tools as opposed to an uh, offensive opener or something of that sort. And as a flanking tool, which you know goes well with, with the machine gun, even though this game also lets you pick. Uh, Either the missile ports, it lets you pick the hub, no, not the hyper bazooka, the regular 280mm bazooka, and of course the Magella top gun that's chambered in 175. Do I went with the more, uh, well, with the loadout that was closer to the one in Gundam Evolution, but what it does adhere to when it comes to Gundam Evolution and that's kind of part most is the Heat Hawk. 
as you could see it did the number on that gym and basically single-handedly got Tozaku to the victory for Gundam Barbatos specifically the Barbatos fourth uh, form I picked its G generation counterpart due to it being one of the few games that feature this model you have three weapons in total the mace the sword and the 300 mm smoothbore gun not bad for a mainly melee unit not bad at all Next up is the Sazabi from Gundam Assault Survive. I picked this one because in this game it has the homing dash and the tomahawk and the beam shotgun and of course the funnels and the shield as well. So basically aside from the semi wall hack thingy that it has in Gundam Evolution it shares the whole moveset. I'd say, well, save for that one, and uh, yeah, you can uh, use the funnel whenever you're not uh, firing, because, well, this one does make such a distinction, so essentially if you wanted to specifically get the, you can use these funnels only when you're not actively firing part of the G maneuver this is where you can get it of course you have the combined you have the combined throw of the tomahawk and the shield missile but please ignore the shield missile I just took it for the tomahawk throw second of all as you can see it has under specific angles it does have a quote unquote shooting guard which is a mechanic and gonna assault survive which Basically, if you fire under a certain angle, you also angle the shield to the front, meaning that uh, your uh, meaning that as long as you keep that angle up, it's the shield's gonna stay up and cover your front or your side or you know center mass. Anywho, as you can see, it's making short work of the enemies and. Well, it is rather, you know, it's a much more powerful suit when compared to the Gundam Evolution one because it has missiles. It also has the torso mounted mega particle can, which I didn't show off, and the funnels. The funnels are faster. When it comes to mobility, when transformed, the Mephis in Gundam vs. Ada Gundam is largely unparalleled. While I couldn't really find uh, a Mephis with a healing ability per se, I mean the closest you can get is probably the one in the PS4 Gundam vs. game, but even on that one it's a tad bit iffy. So I went with the one that you know, was closer to that uh, at least mobility wise and when it came to the visual side of things when it came well <laughs> when it comes to attacks because yeah this one also packs a grenade launcher but uh, unlike the one on uh, the Gundam Assault Survive methods it's it's a much more uh, it's a much more subdued thing but uh, as you can see just like in Gundam Evolution it does have too much damage output with the with the beam pistols or well, arm beam guns if you wanted to be like, super specific but at the same time it can put up quite the fight even against the Ashmar which is kind of the polar opposite i.e. more health and you know picking a gun that hits quite hard but as you can see it it can do flybys it can uh, 
it can perform pretty well by itself even though it's much more suited to sortie with allies and assist them in combat that way. Now you might be asking, Shirt Lad, why didn't you use a GM sniper from Lost War Chronicles, Battlefield Record 0081, or Missing Link, or even Crossfire? Well, I had a specific reason. The reason being that none of them let you equip the reconnaissance equipment or the repair gun. I went with the next best thing. GM Sniper 2 from SD Gundam G Generation Overworld, alongside the EWAC parts for the former and the repair kit for the latter. Aside from its sniper rifle, which can be used as both a regular and a map weapon, this one also packs a 90mm machine gun and a beam saber. On to everyone's favorite orange grenade lobbing donut, the Ashmar. So I've picked Gundam Assault Survival for this one, as I said in the intro. Uh, this one's pretty fast, it has the donut mode, which you've probably seen in the game already. And uh, at the same time it has some grenades on its hand, while also keeping the beam rifle. And it can also do charge shots that do burst fire. Because, you know, charge shots are a universal mechanic in this game. Another cool thing to note is that you can throw grenades right after exiting the mobile armor mode. So if you want to use that for bombardment, that's the way you go. Another thing is, the punches ain't, that, uh, you know, the punches ain't half bad, as you could see from my prompt demonstration and overall it is quite an interesting rendition of that suit not to mention the fun of just ramming stuff with it and of course the grenades can't forget the grenades they're they're great they're frag grenades not incendiary grenades but they make for quite a show that's for sure next up is the Dawn Trooper from Gundam C Destiny and you know Gundam Evolution and in this case Rango vs F2 this one comes with you know the regular two purpose launcher with the beams and the rockets of course with the screaming Nimbus as well even though this one mainly relies on the shield to do most of the defending cause the screaming Nimbus uh, shield is uh, it doesn't deal damage to things in front of it, unlike in the anime, and uh, at the same time it defends only against beam attacks, so it's a bit of a mixed bag, if you ask me. But aside from a couple of cumbersome animations, it's a good, it's a good all-rounder, I'd say. And it, as you can see, it can uh, can do some decent damage to, for example, the Strike Gundam or the Buster that I was fighting. The Turn A Gundam in uh, Gundam uh, Musou Reborn, or Shin Gundam Musou, or Gundam Dynasty Words Reborn, whichever you prefer. Anywho, this segment is from Ultronimus. And uh, yeah, the thing I was trying to say is that, uh, as you can see, this turn A is much, much closer to its anime counterpart as opposed to the one in Gundam Evolution. For example, it does sport the Gundam Hammer, it uses the dashing animation from the show, of course it also has a missile container within its chest, and uh, a couple more goodies that you'll see in a second. As you can see, the spin a little, spin a little Gundam hammer can do the number, can do quite some numbers, as well as the nuke that was in the chest, just like in the show. And uh, yeah, another thing that you can see is that. The, the beam rifle ain't too shabby as well, and this is, you know, in uh, Gundam Evolution this would be the G maneuver, but in this one it is the Air Muso attack, which is the Moonlight Butterfly, by the way. 
And uh, well, it may not seem like much, the specific unit, but it is quite good at dealing with crowds. Now, I personally haven't played the turn eight Gundam too much in Gundam Moose over Pornu because I, I like my egg guy, I like my bound dog, and I like my granddaddy Gundam. Nonetheless, it is quite formidable how he can dispatch with quite well, how he can dispatch quite a lot of foes just by those few attacks. So, yeah, quite the powerhouse in this one. The gun tank in uh, Gundam vs uh, Gundam Next Plus for the PSP is a rather formidable machine. I mean, you you get your cannons with a much much higher ammo capacity than you know in a lot of games. I mean, the only exception that I can think of is the third-person shooters, which also feature the gun tank. However, those don't let you use the core fire, so I went with this one. And uh, fortunately, the presence of the dash cancels in uh, the next boss uh, game and you know, following installments, do well, those mechanics do make it much, much more, uh, say, versatile. It has, uh, that's the right word. It doesn't have any melee attacks, so it has to rely on the bot missiles and the cannons, and of course the core fighter, which you know it does stop in place. But if you hit it, you you basically have a guaranteed stun, which you can then follow up from. And oh yeah, the the Axia might be faster, might be you know it might have a transam, but. It can't really do much if I'm belting it with cannon fire. Another interesting thing is that, uh, you know, despite having no melee attacks, it can also, you know, it can also go into the sniper mode. And you know, despite its, uh, despite its rather, you know, slow, uh, slow movement speed, it has really nice thing about going for it which is a very low unit cost specifically just thousand points so you can respond with this one quite effortlessly and as you can see I got the round finishing kill with just the core fighter which in my opinion is pretty neat well uh, given the gym shredder bare bones moveset at least in most games Unless you want the GM with a bazooka and such, uh, it is no, it is no surprise that I picked the uh, one from Gundam vs Zeta Gundam. It has the shield that the GM has in Gundam Evolution. It it has the beam spread gun, that uh, well the beam spray gun or the beam spread gun, whichever you prefer from uh, that game as well. However, it doesn't have you know the grenades and such, but well, such is the case for a lot of uh, other kind of games. So I just went with the one that just had the feel of the GM that was, in my opinion, the closest to to you know to the one in the Gundam Evolution, because this one is a more of a let's say frontline fighter, you know, unlike the Zaku. Which you know fits the. It fits the. It fits the role, which. You know which is regularly, well, which is more or less imposed on the units and get them evolution. So yeah. It's a neat all-rounder unit. It has head vulcans. It has the beam spray gun or spread gun. And it has a beam saber in case you want to engage in some close quarters combat as well. So the extra featured is from the game uh, Gundam vs Gundam Next Boss, just like the gun tank. And I did so just because you know this one's fast, this one dashes around just like you know in Gundam Evolution. It has daggers, it has the beam gun, it has the big sword, 
it can jump around of course it has the Trans Am which I'll show once it charges and uh, yeah this is this is a fast 2000 cost melee unit well mainly melee unit as you can see I can so throw things around and uh, you know the the Trans Am in this one just makes it dash around much much faster it's a bit like the combination of uh, the Trans Am and Gundam Evolution like for the Axia and uh, I could say that it's kind of a bit well it's a bit like you know the sword attack that Barbatos and Gundam Evolution has it like in this game it can be used once per life but you gotta wait for it to recharge so it's a uh, is the ace in the hole as opposed to something that can be used over and over again as an assist in this game it has dynamis but you know I ain't showing that one yet because you now it makes sense for me to to rather use a separate segment for the dynamis because you know the dynamis it is the new addition after all so that alone should warrant something like that and uh, yeah thanks to the dashes I can uh, keep the Gundam at bay and defeat it given that most games feature the regular Marisai I picked the unicorn version from G Generation Genesis as it features all the weapons from both the OVA and Gundam Evolution. The Sea Serpent can only shock and the Beam Saber has no knockback, but overall it is a pretty solid moveset. Unless you count the Rima front, the G Generation Overworld's iteration of Mahiro is one of the best looking out there. It comes with the handgun, the toroidal beam gun and the standard issue equipment, though this time the kicks are replaced with claw attacks. Yet another G Generation Genesis entry, since I really like the added gravitas to the Heat Hawk's wings. The loadout is more or less similar to most of the game's Zakus, though without grenades, and the Heat Hawk is significantly larger alongside the damage increase. So, for the Unicorn we have yet another Gundam Muso Reborn segment. This iteration sports Beam Magnum, Beam Gatling, of course, and uh, the Beam Tom Fuzz in the arms, and you know, the standard issue Beam Saber, the new Hap Bazooka, and so on and so forth. It, uh, it can cleave through the enemies with relative ease. It has the NTD system as a part of the Muso attacks. And uh, yeah, generally it's a, it's a pretty hard hidden one. As you can see, this is a nice pilot, so let's see how it fares. Bam! And uh, yeah, even, it even got the uh, big fat shot from the beam magnum and nicely chained into a ground muso attacks fully displaying the NTD. All before I overextend this segment, on to another one. Now pick the, pick the next bus again for the new Gundam. Cause, you know, it has the nice little flip with the bazooka, which yeah, I absolutely dig. And, uh, you know, usually people do enjoy the bazooka flip, even though this guy also has, like, the dummy balloons, it has the funnels, which you're on deploying right now, and which are kind of bullying this poor Sazby. <laughs> Another thing it has, of course, you know, the beam rifle, the, the standard issue beam sabers, and, uh, yeah, you might be asking like what where's the where's the beam barrier right well the thing is that in this game it uh, 
it is somewhat reliant on how much HP you have. Like I think it like I think it's like on your uh, last hundred or such. I don't remember the exact threshold, but it's basically that you get the barrier and uh, yeah, the, it supposedly gives you a hand with that, but. I'm gonna try and uh, not lose any units, meaning that while I am trying to get the barrier out, it won't be a guarantee, cause, you know, I don't necessarily want to get yeeted by the Sazabine, which I have promptly destroyed. You know, uh, surprisingly enough, outside of Maxi Boost and the Anim Evolution, there isn't a lot of games that have the Hyperion. So the game I have on hand is uh, Gundam Seed Battle Destiny. No excuse the graphical issues please, uh, the simple matter of fact is that I'm running this on the Vita 3K emulator, meaning that well, due to the fact that it supports only some dumps and such, it is a little difficult to get it to run without getting these graphical glitches. So essentially, it has the same uh, it has the same uh, bubble-like shield, even though in uh, this case the shields are uh, mostly based on. Uh, on the amount of, well, it's uh, durability is based on, like, uh, it's based on uh, HP as opposed to some kind of a durability timer. Of course it comes with the beam shield, it has the machine gun, I've already shown you, like, the way the 4th entry cannon works, the one on the back, and this is what should be the G maneuver. You know the thing with the spikes and uh no there's there's new targets so I'll display it rather quickly. Just gonna line up the shot you know one more couple more shots from the fourth entry gun because you know, that one's always cool. The machine gun ain't too shabby either. And since I already have the stacks, I can. No, oh, didn't reach it. Fortunately, I have enough meter to do it again. Oh, I, I can remove the beam spikes. It's a, it's a pretty good unit in this game. It has defensive options and such. So, unless you're running hyper bosses, which melt you instantly, it. It is a formidable pick for whatever purpose you want to use it for. You know, I was kind of split when picking the game for the Heavy Arms uh, custom uh, Endless Waltz version. Because you have the Heavy Arms Kai in, uh, in Next Plus, but that one uh, is in the TV colors and doesn't have double gate links. The one on the PS1 with the Gundam Bell Assault. Now that one is very jumpy, it uh, has it has all the projectiles that you want, but at the same time it doesn't have the somersaults, so full boost it is. Now the full boost one is pretty good, even though it, uh, at least in my humble opinion, it has a hard time against melee, which, you know, not a strong suit to counter, I mean, probably the... As you can see, I'm getting semi-bodied by <laughs> by the gold frame over here, and uh, fortunately, I got at least some of the missiles off. Now it has the giant gatlings, though it cannot. Uh, well, it doesn't fire both of them at the same time outside of a specific attack, which, if I recall, is a secondary weapon. Though uh, directional directional sub weapon is this backflip, 
which I've changed with the burst attack and so I made those explosions the somersault lets you fire one rocket which you know it is kinda neat and uh, yeah it's a good ranged unit but it requires a lot of practice in certain departments and lastly the gun dynamis I picked the Gundam Assault Survive one because it's got the full package. Besides it has the charge shot that looks very nice. Anyway, as so you can see I can switch to the beam pistol. I can use the well, I can use the armor plates that are hanging by the sides as a shield. The the sniper rifle, yeah that one can manually you know, it can manually adjust the aim offset, which you know sometimes is a good thing, but sometimes it makes it a little unwieldy if you accidentally press the direction buttons while firing that one. And of course, it comes with the GN missiles as a secondary weapon. Though this, oh yeah, the, the yeah I also pop the transom. So the transom just makes you faster and slightly more powerful. And uh, yeah, so it it's good enough for what it is, and you know, as a as a variation to the G maneuver in Gundam Evolution, it's it is fitting enough, to say the least. As you can see, I did a few trick shots with the sniper rifle. As I was saying, it does. Yeah, it ha it also has a flight mode, by the way. And the, the GN missiles there. They're just regular missiles, but you know, a little smaller, and they, uh, at least in this game, they're a little smaller, and uh, you can spam them from your armor. Now the thing to note, the the beam pistols can fire in bursts, so you can basically pop a pretty decent barrage, because uh, you have the you have the beam saber if the things do get more hairy, but generally you're well equipped for basically any situation. And the fact that you can fly around lets you reposition rather quickly, making it a very appealing uh, sniper unit, to say the least. And with that one, the showcase is more or less over. I would also like to thank Ultronimus for providing me with the segments for Turn A Gundam and the Unicorn. If you found this one neat, feel free to let me know. There's more stuff in the works and this is Shirtlad, signing out.